today on Goji Center, the shores of Isla Sorna will once again be invaded by a foreign menace. This time we are talking about a monster notorious for being a force of destruction and the walking epitome of death the ferocious Devil Joe. Will there be anything on this island that can stop this thing? How will the dinosaur population deal with this threat? Are the Spinosaurus and Sauropods strong enough to put an end to this warpath? Watch till the end to find out. Coming up, Devil Joe in Isla Sorna. For the first time on Goji Center, a creature from the Monster Hunter franchise will make its appearance. A lot of the monsters in this universe are actually quite strong, and will pose a serious threat if they step into other franchises with similar-sized creatures. Some notable monsters include Rathalos, Tigrex, Rajang, and Diablos, just to name very few. Today, we'll be using a monster that is considered one of the hardest fights in Monster Hunter, sending players straight to their therapist after encountering one in-game after many futile attempts to kill this thing. To understand how this animal will affect the Jurassic World franchise, we must first take some time to understand this animal's behavior, anatomy, its weapons and abilities that will dictate whether this dude can settle in for the long run or not. Devil Joe is a fearsome pickle eh, eh, theropod-shaped wyvern known for its high aggression and insatiable hunger. This highly unpredictable animal will attack anything it finds on its path and will more likely than not be able to stump any unlucky animal that it comes across. Unlike some of the other animals we have discussed in this series, such as Vagar, Toothless, or Arx Giga, animals who are quick to search for territory to stay and thrive in. This animal will actually do the complete opposite. One of the most widely known characteristics of Devil Joe is the fact that this dude won't really come here looking to establish a set territory. These guys are described as nomadic animals, meaning they will not stay in one place. They just continue strolling, leaving nothing but corpses behind. So, now to its physical features. Devil Joe, estimated size for this simulation 67.7 feet in length, massive jaws with many rows of teeth, short arms, very muscular and abnormally strong but relatively short legs, its trademark thick chunky tail lined with sharp spikes. You'll notice that this creature has some strange scarring on his back. These stretch marks are sort of a result of this animal's muscle swelling when this animal becomes enraged, exposing old scars and seemingly increasing this creature's muscle mass. A very different sort of flex. Attack maneuvers include digging its chin on the floor like a shovel and raising it to hurl dirt and rocks at its enemies, near comical leaping abilities, able to shoot a mysterious substance known as dragon element from its mouth to inflict damage, pinning smaller creatures down on the floor and repeatedly mutilating them while getting drenched in its corrosive saliva. One thing to note about this animal, and something we really need to discuss before we see this dude attack big animals, is the fact that this creature's jaw isn't really the best at biting really hard. This bite is sometimes described as bone-crushing in some sources, but if we're going to take a video game creature and put it into a more <laughs> grounded universe with more realistic physics, some in-game attributes won't hold up, the bite being one of them. If we look closely, Devil Joe's jaw is full of teeth which cycle through its lifetime. As these become dull, these are replaced with sharper teeth. Bite force as we know it really depends on the amount of surface area that makes contact with the victim plus the power of the muscles biting down. The more points of contact, the less pressure is exerted. Here's where we have our problem. Devil Joe's jaw and tooth arrangement make it very difficult for us to back up the fact that this jaw is bone crushing. Okay, sure, if you put a relatively small animal such as a cow in its mouth, then okay, fine, you have your bone crushing bite force. But anything of similar size probably won't feel its bones crunching immediately. Instead, it would feel a lot of piercing wounds. This explains why we see Devil Joe constantly pick up creatures with its mouth and shake them around like a rag doll, using the animal's own weight against it, swinging it all over the place to finally kill the victim. In this simulation, Devil Joe will be spawned on the island shores, and it won't take much time for this animal to spot its first victims. As Devil Joe begins making his way inland, he'll probably have to carve his way through the thick jungles and then proceed to follow game trails left behind by the larger hadrosaurs and sauropods. Before he gets here, however, there will be some creatures that will take note of this giant predator. Compsognathus and other small creatures such as Dilophosaurus, upon witnessing this massive monster, they will do well to run away, staying far from this animal. 
The shuffling of the trees and fleeing creatures will capture the attention of the nearby raptors. Curious to see what is going on, they will probably want to close in in high numbers for safety. And upon seeing what is in front of it, the hungry Devil Joe would have found its first potential meal. But hold on a second. An animal this big shouldn't be able to move this fast and be able to outrun some raptors. Especially these raptors, which are said to run at anywhere between 40 to 60 miles per hour on a full sprint. And besides, these raptors would be confidently approaching this animal. At first, since they know that they can easily outrun other big theropods like T-Rex or Spinosaurus. So this one may be easier to outrun, right? No, <laughs> this is a new kind of predator. And it won't take long for the entire island to feel its presence. Devil Joe surprises the raptor pack with its superb, almost supernatural leaping ability. This 68-foot animal jumps and crushes a few raptors with just one stump. This voracious animal devours these raptors in an instant. Devil Joe has now begun to hunt. After finishing off these few raptors, Devil Joe will now continue chasing after remaining survivors, but they are too fast. They will never mess with him again. But not everything on this island is as quick as the raptors. In fact, nothing else is. Everything else here will be within reach. Earlier, we mentioned that this guy had an insatiable hunger, but that's because this animal's metabolism works a little too well, burning through the calories it eats at record speed, meaning that as soon as Devil Joe finishes its first meal, it wants more. Hearing the sounds of other dinosaurs in the distance, the Devil Joe will head to the open plains where an innumerable number of dinosaurs await their doom. The dinosaurs that we are about to bring up and watch get hunted are the following. Gallimimus, Crithosaurus, Parasaurolophus, Pachycephalosaurus, Ankylosaurus, Triceratops, and Stegosaurus. You may notice that we didn't mention any big theropods or sauropods, but just sit there and wait a little bit. Devil Joe will get to these guys soon. These are the animals that will be found on these grasslands, dusty plains, or on the bordering forests. Scattered amongst almost every corner of this especially large island, Devil Joe will begin to find these animals and begin the hunt. Instinctively, this animal is almost wired to kill anything on sight. Unlike the Indominus Rex, however, Devil Joe will eventually perform a cleanup operation killing the animals who fail to run away the fastest, killing them all while eating them. But this won't happen very quickly. Let's go down there and find out why. Out of all of the dinosaurs we mentioned in this list, it is the Ankylosaurus who is the slowest. So we'll begin with this one. What will happen if Devil Joe sees an Ankylosaurus? The InGen Ankylosaurus from Isla Sorna were a little smaller in size than their Nublar counterparts, measuring a little less than 30 feet in length, less than half of the total length of Devil Joe. And upon catching up to the slower Ankylosaurus, he will aim to bite the head of this animal. With its immense strength, the poor Ankylosaurus will suffer from a snapped neck from the violent shaking. Its armor is tough enough to handle this bite for a little bit of time, but its weight, coupled with all this swinging, will grant the Ankylosaurus a quick and painless death. The other larger animals won't have it so easy. The next herbivore is Stegosaurus. Now here we're talking about a variant that was much larger than its real world and Isla Nublar counterparts. Sorna's Stegosaurus would measure at an astonishing 39.4 feet in length, almost as big as a T-Rex, its swinging tail being its primary weapon. But would this be a problem for Devil Joe? No, one very common attack maneuver the Devil Joe uses is its tail swing attack. No, this isn't just any tail. This one is incredibly robust, lined with spikes that serve as a heavy club. One well-placed strike of this tail would be enough to violently tip over the Stegosaurus. Unable to swing its tail, Devil Joe would head right in and crush its head. The last heavily armored herbivore remaining is Triceratops. Again, Sorna Triceratops are a bit bigger than their Cretaceous ancestors and those in Nublar. Measuring at around 35 feet in length and relying on their herd to overwhelm a large apex predator, will Devil Joe prevail in this situation? Likely so. In the world of Monster Hunter, Devil Joe would have faced creatures who were many times more dangerous than a few Triceratops. If a hungry Devil Joe happened to run into a few trikes in defense formation, one of the first things Joe will be capable of doing would be leveraging its leaping ability, avoiding the horns, and landing on the spine of this unlucky Triceratops. Internal trauma would occur, and the crippled, blood-coughing Triceratops would soon perish. The rest of the trikes enter panic mode and flee, easily picked apart by this leaping, hungry Devil Joe. 
As we witness the Devil Joe become the most efficient predator on the island, leaving corpses behind and eventually eating them, the pile of dead animals and the smell of blood and commotion will most definitely attract the attention of a few surrounding apex predators. However, there is another big problem that is bound to happen. Previously in this series, any animal that enters a territory, that being Skull Island or one of the Jurassic World islands, most of these predators would settle down in a certain area of the map. This means that this predator would take control of this area, killing off any rival predators and establishing its territory. Devil Joe is not your typical animal. Because this animal is a nomad, this said territory really wouldn't exist. On the contrary, this animal would continuously visit different environments, terrains, and massacre anything until it grew too big to feed itself or just got killed. Here on Sorna, Devil Joe didn't just kill a bunch of herbivores, he evacuated them. And this is a problem. Let us explain. In the real world, there is a concept that will help us explain why Isla Sorna is about to turn into a complete shit show. The term known as Landscape of Fear is an ecological concept that describes how the presence of predators influences the behaviors and distribution of prey in an ecosystem. For example, prey animals assess the risk of being hunted in certain areas and adjust their everyday activities, such as foraging and resting, based on perceived danger. They will do these things in areas where the risk of encountering a predator is low. In contrast, an area where a predator lurks often will be avoided. Common sense, right? Deer may avoid open fields where they would be easily spotted by coyotes. Small animals such as hares and squirrels will stay in wooded areas to prevent getting spotted by a nearby falcon. So, what does this have anything to do with our scenario? If you remember, our Devil Joe massacred every herbivore in this area. The remaining animals would have stampeded into territory unknown to them, or opt for staying in a territory with a less dangerous predator. These existing animals who are currently living there would then enter into conflict with their new neighbors. Resources would run low or be highly contested, and then there's the matter of the big predators lurking around. That being the T-Rexes that are spread around the island and the Spinosaurus. The real problem here is that literally every herbivore will constantly be chased left and right. Devil Joe will certainly not stay in one territory. Instead, he'll continue eating and eventually cause a localized extinction event if not stopped. In the present day, there have been a few recorded instances where just a single type of predator wiped out an entire species. In the 19th century, in one of the islands neighboring New Zealand, the Stevens Island Wren, a flightless bird, was driven to extinction by a single lighthouse keeper's cat. This, amongst plenty of other examples like the brown tree snake wiping out several bird species in Guam, or arctic foxes wiping out ground-nesting seabirds, all instances of localized extinction events in isolated ecosystems. The World Art Book also describes a similar event committed by a Devil Joe who apparently gobbled up an entire region. As we can see, the continuous chasing down of these prey animals will ultimately disrupt the whole ecological balance of the island. One day, the Devil Joe will have chased the herbivore horde into sauropod territory. Now, these two can coexist, but just like any large animal, they like to have their space, once again raising hostilities between prey animals. Devil Joe will have now entered this territory and set its sights on the slower and easy-to-spot Mementosaurus. There is a reason why a single theropod would think twice before attacking a full-grown sauropod. Just running into this animal would make a lighter theropod suffer a bad injury. But apart from being big, Mementosaurus can fight back with a tail that makes up a big chunk of its body length. And if struck once, this will most definitely hurt and potentially kill a lesser predator. Because this animal is much larger than your normal theropod, this means that the neck of this sauropod is within range. And being quick enough to evade a huge swinging tail and outflank, the Devil Joe bites down on the neck of this beast. Alternatively, other maneuvers such as crippling its legs using the head as a sort of mace or shoulder checking the legs to trip down the Mementosaurus, a bit of a struggle but still doable. If there was any creature that could actually put a pause to Devil Joe, it was this one. Now nobody is safe. Too soon? We haven't even discussed the Spino and the Rexes yet. They too will probably have to run. We'd like to think that at this point other lesser predators such as the Carnotaurus and Stratosaurus that are lurking around here would have been yet another casualty. At this point, the island's inhabitants are stirred up with nowhere to run. Nobody sleeps in peace knowing that at any moment a hungry Devil Joe may pull up and once again turn them extinct. Because there are more T-Rexes on this island, it is more likely that Devil Joe would have run into a T-Rex before the single Spinosaurus. The result of this matchup really goes down to the stats. 
In general, Devil Joe is bigger, more agile, has a larger array of weapons, better leaping abilities, and is likely to stump the T-Rex at some point during the fight. T-Rex admittedly would still have a matching, if not stronger, bite force. But there is one ability that will tip the scales catastrophically, Dragon Element. This is a mysterious element found in Elder Dragon species in Monster Hunter, giving them supernatural abilities. Devil Joe here being one of the rare instances of a non-Elder creature possessing this element. For Devil Joe, this takes form as a weapon that can be shot out like a ray, and in later renditions of this wyvern, can shoot this into the ground, producing a cloud-like formation, ultimately building up to a blast with explosive damage. Against a T-Rex who manages to make the Devil Joe angry, this ability would undoubtedly be used to try to inflict damage. What type of damage? In the world of Monster Hunter, this doesn't come across as burning damage. Despite its appearance, getting hit by this stuff can do things like lowering health levels and nullifying the elemental effects of the hunter's weapons. For other creatures, it will deal elemental damage and alter their abilities and behavior, not make them go off in flames. In this more grounded, realistic scenario, this explosion would deal concussive damage, but also psychological. One fun fact about Devil Joes is that they can sometimes go the cannibal route when their dietary needs need to be met, so to avoid any cannibalistic or hostile behavior during mating season, these would let out pheromones in a certain region, pretty much saying, hey, stop killing each other, I'm horny, er, uh, I'm looking for a mate. Similarly, these pheromones in the form of dragon element would be dealing with some psychological work in the T-Rex's brain, causing it to not think straight, instigating confusion, and ultimately greatly affecting its combat acumen. And since these things have the best olfactory organs on this island, they would probably be affected greatly. If you're still lost, know that pheromones are like scent particles released by certain animals to communicate. Your dog does this all the time. Things like, hey, this is my territory, or who wants to breed? Or in some cases, releasing alarm pheromones warning other animals to watch out and increasing their stress and fear. Devil Joe's cocktail mix of chemicals may have the same effect here. After being bested physically and psychologically, T-Rex would likely end up being Joe's lunch. There's another animal who picked up on this, one who also is known for hunting T-Rexes. Being an animal who is attracted to the scent of the rival apex predator's urine and more than happy to pick a fight, the Spino here will soon find out that this fight may be one he may have to run away from, depending on when the Devil Joe arrived in Sorna. If this happened during the events of Jurassic Park 3, then Devil Joe will likely have zero problems facing an angry theropod with a weaker bite than the T-Rex. A full-grown T-Rex and a Spinosaurus in this universe are relatively similar in terms of mass and would be equally dealt with with a stomp or heavy tail swipe. If the Spino turns out more difficult, the swelled up and angry Devil Joe would resort to using its dragon element blasts, or using its own head as a mace to try to knock out the Spino. With a plethora of battle maneuvers and the Spino being too short and not strong enough to lock in a neck snap maneuver, the Devil Joe snatches the title of Apex Predator in Sorna from the Spino. But does this mean that this creature has a clear road ahead to cause a true extinction event? Well, remember that there is the matter of running speed. During the many days, even weeks, of Devil Joe massacring all the dinosaurs, the numbers of these creatures begin declining. These creatures are too stressed to breed or eat, and consequently these now malnourished animals get fatigued faster and become easier to kill, rendering the Hadrosaur, Ceratopsian, Stegosaurid, and Sauropod population down to just a couple, if not zero. And when that day comes, Devil Joe's in trouble. From this day on, chasing after the smaller, more nimble Gallimimus and Pachycephalosaurus will be more trouble than it's worth. Except this time, Devil Joe has no choice. He must continue chasing down food, and as each animal goes down its belly, the chances of this animal surviving another day diminish. At this point, the only animals alive would be the smaller Dilophosaurus, Compies, and the Raptors. The lack of Hadrosaurs and other available prey animals force these Velociraptors to start hunting the predators the next tier down. Devil Joe? Unfortunately for this wyvern, the food is now too scarce. Each compi, dilo, or gallimimus is too hard to find. The pterosaurs flying above are practically unreachable. Eventually, after a couple of days without eating, an animal like this would take its last breath and ironically cause its own extinction. In this case, both variants of Velociraptor are the new apex predators in the island. Being smaller and faster than Devil Joe were the only reason why they evaded death. 
The aftermath of the advent of Devil Joe is nothing but death and the annihilation of entire species, a disrupted food chain, and a new way of life for the surviving species.